Welcome to the Kill Count, where we tell- you know what? I hope you're happy. I really do. Because I had two options this year. Cover this movie, or spend another year reading comments telling me to do it. So here it is! Thanks Killing 3, possibly the least enjoyable movie I've ever sat through. Four years ago, I covered Thanks Killing as my first Thanksgiving episode Kill Count. It was a glorified home movie made in 2007 for less than 4,000 bucks. It bewildered the hell out of me. What the fuck is this movie? I rewatched Thanks Killing for the first time this year, and I can honestly say it's a damn good time. Its ultra low budget makes it a time capsule of the era, and it accomplishes something rarely done well for me a movie purposefully trying to be so bad it's good. Thanks Killing succeeded because of the cast, whose horrendous acting perfectly matched the movie's tone. Every single one of them understood the assignment, and I can name double digit scenes that had me laughing aloud. <laughs> Thanks Killing 3 is not that. Not an ounce of charm from the first film made its way into the sequel. And yes, this is the one and only sequel to Thanks Killing. There's no Thanks Killing 2. That's part of the so-called joke. Thanks Killing 3 was made with Kickstarter money that provided a budget of $112,000. Literally 32 times the amount they used to make the first movie. Unfortunately, looks like all that money was spent on puppets. This is a movie full of puppets. It's just puppets. Horrible puppets! I thought Turkey was fine in the first Thanks Killing. I didn't love all his jokes, and his voice acting was bad, but it worked well enough since he was balanced by the human cast. But now the turkey bastard's back, bigger and badder than ever, and he's surrounded by other puppets that are annoying to look at and even worse to listen to. It's impossible to care about them or anything else on screen. The original film was a send-up of a slasher. Thanks Killing 3 is a series of random scenes with no meaning. One moment it's kind of a horror movie, the next it's a music video. It's a hundred freaking minutes, a masturbatory indulgence that feels twice as long as the the original, which ran just over an hour. The extra time is bursting at the seams with humor that doesn't work. A lot of it trying to coast on being oh so le random. I was hoping I'd be wrong about this movie being awful, but I wasn't. I have never been more miserable watching a film. You have given me no option, so here I dance for you. Let's get to the Thanksgiving kills, you little meaties. The movie begins with a nipple, again. It's a woman in space wearing a suit that would surely kill her, played by Wanda Lust, the same adult film actress who played the Pilgrim in the beginning of the first movie. Much like in that movie, she's killed right away, cut in half by lasers from a shitty ship flown by a shitty bird. Nice tits, bitch! In space! And away we go. The crappy spaceship flies past a title card for this movie within a movie, Thanks Killing 2. It's said to have been legendarily bad, with only one copy still in existence. We see all the others being destroyed by flamethrowers during the opening credits. While that happens, we're treated to the dubstep score by Zayn Effendi, which is legitimately the best part of this movie. Yes, the best part of this movie is dubstep. Take that as you will. It's much better than the lead protagonist, this puppet named Yomi, who has literally lost her mind. Don't be afraid. Find me, and you'll find home. I can't believe you're all making me watch this shit. Turkey the Killer Turkey has been domesticated, living life in a big house with his unnamed wife and son Nibla. Between the two new characters, I don't know whose voice acting I hate more. You ready for some cake, Nibla? Oh, Mom, I don't want none. Never mind, it's Nibla. I hate Nibla's more. That falsetto is like stabbing my eardrums with a turkey baster. Anyway, hope you don't hate vomit, because Mama Turkey pukes all over her kid. And it was this moment, eight minutes into the movie, that Chelsea tapped out and left me watching this alone. Turkey watches a series of commercials, all filmed in a way that makes it obvious this movie wants to be Wonder Shows in or an adult swim show. One of them teases a new character named Uncle Donnie. He wears a wig and sells a turkey plucking appliance called the Pluckmaster 3000. Order now. Turkey sees on the news that his movie Thanks Killing 2 has been cancelled. One of the worst movies ever made. <sighs> Consequently, the studio has vowed to never release it. It upsets him quite a bit, and some Evil Dead 2 looking shots pretend that he's about to go wild again. He murders his wife by slicing her in half, and though turkeys aren't humanoid, don't even think about the rules for this one, okay? Turkey tells Nibla to come be evil with him as he seeks out the last remaining copy of Thanks Killing 2. Yo, wait, what the fuck is Smarf doing on the TV? Turkey and Nibla take a seagull taxi, but eventually the kid annoys his father so much that Turkey kills his own son by throwing him overboard and causing a splash. 
that. And hey, the movie censored that one, so don't get on me about it. Turkey then sends Nibla's soul up into the air to look around for a copy of his movie. A singing fly has gotten lost on his way to the Meet the Feeble set and winds up in a dumpster instead, where he finds that puppet Yomi looking for her mind. She talks to a bag of trash who introduces his cartoon friend Meowmir. Come on, what the fuck are we doing here, people? He's a cat that will save the day. This shit is like a bad video on E-Bomb's world. The name's Puma. Yeah, the smart one of the lot. I'm super duper bright because I don't smoke pot. Well, I can tell you that cat didn't write this movie. The trash bag spits out a Thanks Killing 2 DVD at Yomi, so now she's unfortunately part of this movie's plot. Big air quotes on plot. Yomi sees that Uncle Donnie dude leaving the TV station, and the two of them exchange more of this movie's high-caliber comedic dialogue. It's called a wig. Oh, like a wig Newton! No, not like a wig Newton at all. Fucking kill me. Uncle Donnie's got a billboard where his product promises to give peace of mind, so Yomi says she wants to go with him in hopes of finding hers. Donnie's Thanksgiving dinner dates are his friend Jefferson, who also wears a wig, and Jefferson's puppet mom Lois, whose voice acting, much like all the other characters, sounds like a bad South Park impression. Well, Jefferson, last night I grabbed onto D'Angelo's cock. Brought it in my mouth and held on for dear life. Does that sound like love? That is when she isn't rapping. Sitting on 13, wheelchair, hella clean. I used to knit and sew, but now I'm off that BETV screen. I miss Darren and Billy. Uncle Donnie and Yomi get back home, where Jefferson takes a disliking to Yomi. Wait. This thing is making me so mad, Donnie! Me too, dude! These jackasses are wearing wigs because they want to build Thanksgiving Land, a Thanksgiving-themed amusement park. I do like the ride names. It's got a gravy train. Yam tram, it's got a maze maze, it's amazing. I'll hand it to Joe Hartzler, who plays Jefferson, and Daniel Usa, who plays Uncle Donnie. They occasionally have moments that would get a chuckle out of me if I wasn't too busy wishing for the sweet release of death. Nibla's soul also somehow winds up in this room, and through it, Turkey sees where the DVD of his movie is. The doorbell rings, and Jefferson thinks it's the long pike he ordered to replace his current butter knife contraption. My long pike is here, Dad. I'll be the best head of security at Thanksgiving land. Actually, no you won't, dude, because turns out you're dead. Cut to pieces, somewhat impressively, by the evil killer Turkey. Turkey uses his ambiguous powers to resurrect Nibla as part of the Thanksgiving 2 DVD. But then the filmmakers clearly didn't know what the fuck to do because Nibla's randomly pulled out of the scene through a doorway. Donnie and the others follow it, and Turkey is left behind. Donnie, Yomi, and Lois, aka Flois, are now in a random forest. Nibla flies into their hands too, and they're all found by a hooded turkey holding a staff. This is the wise turkey. I... I am a wise turkey. But you'd be forgiven if you thought it was the evil turkey playing a trick on them. Director Jordan Downey voiced both turkeys, who basically sound the same, and he also provided Yomi's grating falsetto. You know who I am? Can you help me find my mind? Wish he would have hired real voice actors with all that Kickstarter money. Still, I should give credit where credit is due. It'd be wrong of me to make a modern day kill count and not talk about how the movie got made. So, Thanks Killing 3 was co-created by director Jordan Downey and cinematographer Kevin Stewart, who made the first film together. It looks like they had a lot of fun here and made the movie they wanted to make, and they certainly put a lot of effort towards achieving their, uh, vision. Take Turkey's house, for instance. A raised floor was built four feet off the ground, so puppeteers could work underneath it. In fact, a lot of construction and labor went into this thing. More physical work than I've ever devoted to a project, so good on them. I was especially impressed by the way Downey was able to voice and operate Turkey while being rolled around on his back to get certain shots. I must get a copy of Thanks Killing 2. As always, it's impressive that they made a friggin' movie, even though I personally fucking hate it. Wise Turkey and another falsetto puppet, a bird named Slurp Jerp, tell Yomi and Comey the evil Turkey's backstory, but it's all a bunch of bullshit. It, so don't worry about it, okay? Then he gives Yomi a wishbone and disappears. I right, can't write your way out of this scene? Let's just shake the camera around and have these characters back in their house. Sure, yeah, fuck it. Turkey welcomes them back and launches into one of this movie's music video segments. Again, the music is the best part of the movie, so I don't completely mind when things get a little blood machines. At least it's something cool to listen to. During the interlude, Turkey swindles the DVD from Yomi, but before he can get away with it, the doors to the place burst open, because what this movie needs is more puppets. Looks like early worm. Just got the bird. Meet Ronda Worm and his robot thing named Muff. They're from space. They've been shown in a few scenes throughout the movie, trying to hunt down Turkey, and apparently Ronda Worm and Turkey used to fuck. 
Uncle Donnie turns on a giant machine sitting in his house, an early version of his turkey plucking machine, the Pluckmaster 1. It processes turkey and spits him out the window, leaving him badly bloodied but not quite dead. With the poultry threat seemingly neutralized, Donnie asks Rhonda who the hell he is. The worm explains that he was Turkey's co-star in Thanksgiving 2. They began an affair and Rhonda learned that the foul foul was using dark magic in his performance. Anyone who watched Thanksgiving 2 would fall under Turkey's spell. Wait, why is Muff walking like that for this one shot? I guess because it's so fucking random, so it's funny! To destroy the last copy of the movie and prevent Turkey's curse from taking hold, Muff will send the DVD into space through a vortex. To open the vortex, we get an extended scene where Rhonda literally worms his way into Muff's anus. I'm convinced that this is the entire reason Muff was named as such. Has anybody gone Muff diving before? A vortex erupts out of Muff's butthole, so now they can send the DVD into space, destroy it, and end the movie. Right? Wrong! That bastard Turkey is still alive out there, and for help, he's recruiting his turkeys, the bastard's bastards. They rebuild turkeys so this movie can drag on for another 40 minutes. Only problem with the rebuild is that they somehow lost his penis. To make up for the missing member, Turkey gives himself a chainsaw dick and delivers the movie's only halfway decent reference. Gravy. Turkey cuts his way into the house and- String cheese. Kids is loving it. Greeny string cheese. What the fuck is happening? Fuck you. No, fuck you, thanks, Killing 3. Whatever. Turkey sticks his chainsaw inside Lois's mouth while his skelly kids attack the others. Lois is killed by the turkey and his carver and sees her son waiting for her in heaven. It's a decent callback to a joke from the first film, but mostly I'm excited to be rid of that ugly fucking puppet. The vortex gets messed up and then we're back in another music video. It's just a real long dubstepy montage of people kicking skelly turkey ass. On the one hand, I'm mad at how this needlessly lengthens the movie. On the other hand, Bastard Skelly's getting deep. Yomi tries to keep the DVD away from Turkey, but he cuts her down with his chainsaw and runs away with his child, who is also a disc. As Yomi's lying there injured, Rhonda reveals some uninteresting bullshit about how Yomi is actually part of a proto-puppet species from space. She's a puppet? Uh, no. This is what puppets are based on, man. These things have been around for centuries. You just don't see them. Since she's the Ur puppet, Donnie's able to bring her back by sticking his hand up her hole. This goes to show how disturbing something can be if you frame it in a certain way. Yomi's determined to chase after Turkey, but since he ran away through the oven door, only she and Rhonda are fit to follow. Oh, wait, hold up. Rhonda's a hot dog for a minute. Yeah, big fat fuck. Okay, back to Worm Puppet. But this movie! They strap on some turkey beaks as a disguise and head off into turkey hell. That's what this place is. It's inside the oven, so it's what hell is for turkeys. I get it. I'ma skip over the rat puppets who sniff each other's asses and the skeleton turkeys who talk about their sexual exploits. And then I sent that foul packing with a gravy shot to the eye. <laughs> Yomi and Rhonda find turkey getting ready to broadcast his curse worldwide by transmitting his sun slash DVD into every electronic device. He turns it on and gives us our third music video segment of the film. This one gives us four kills to add to the count, with the first three victims played by people who look like the actors from the first movie. I thought they were cameos at first, but turns out, nah. Yomi and Rhonda jump out to confront Turkey, who introduces them to his beast, Franken Turkey. Except Franken Turkey doesn't want to be called Franken Turkey. He wants to be called Blarth, very much so. Chew her up, Franken Turkey! The name is Goddamn Blarth! Goddamn it! Fuck, my name is Blarth! Blarth stomps around screaming his name while Rhonda distracts Turkey, and Yomi steals away the DVD slash Nibla. Yomi and Rhonda run away with Blarth in hot pursuit, but they're able to make it back to Uncle Donnie's place. Muff stops Blarth by blasting him to death with his arm cannon. Man, you know Turkey's gonna put Frank and Turkey on Blarth's gravestone. I'll talk about Blarth for a second, because Bridge Stewart's voice acting got a laugh out of me. <laughs> Blarth was played by creature designer Troy Smith, who wore a wooden harness covered in spray foam painted red. He had a monitor inside the suit, which weighed about 40 pounds, and joined several other people on a moving cart to shoot the chase scene. The cart moved through a groove in the floor of a big cave set, which was built in an LA studio with production design by Shane Richardson. Good work, all of you. Rhonda reveals that he was injured during the getaway, and Muff extra injures him by crushing him to death against his chest. Then Muff accidentally shoots himself in the head. Oh, the Muffmanity! Turkey appears in the room, followed by Wise Turkey, and their fight is done in the style of 
an old video game. Kick his ass, wise turkey. All his base are belong to you. I hate how bad these graphics look, intentionally or not. But I will count wise turkey as a kill via decapitation. No matter how many bits it gets portrayed in, a kill is a kill, you know? Rhonda comes back, but I'm leaving him on the count, and he reactivates the vortex out of Muff's broken butthole. Yomi tries to destroy the DVD once and for all, but Turkey interferes and starts beating her to death. At the last minute, she uses that wishbone to stab Turkey in the chest, causing him to erupt into a pillar of flame. Yomi changes her mind about destroying the DVD because she suddenly feels bad that it would also re-kill Nibla. Good thing she showed mercy, because Turkey's head is still nibbling, and it's Nibla who pushes his dad off and kills Turkey once and for all. Good riddance. Uncle Donnie is keeping Yomi out of the vortex, but then she sees her mind in there, as well as a bunch of other things. So what, were those all hallucinations of hers or something? I don't know. Since Yomi's a proto-puppet who came from outer space, she tells Donnie to let her go so she can return to whence she came. Nibla can come too. Donnie is left behind, the weepy little wig wearer, but he finds joy later by bringing Thanksgiving land to life. He does it with the help of his friends, a reconstructed muff, and Rhonda, who's wearing a hat now. The movie ends the only way it could. Gobble, gobble, motherfucker! Let's get this shit over with. I counted 14 kills in this piece of shit, with two human ladies, a geriatric puppet woman, four dudes, a worm, a muff, and various turkeys. Weirdly enough, since this thing is more than a third turkey, it might be the most actually edible pie chart we've ever had. With a bloated runtime of 99 minutes, that gave us a kill on average just over every 7 minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Mrs. Turkey. Even though it's a turkey, it's still good prosthetic work. I can respect that. Dog machete for lamest kill will go to Blarth since it happened super fast and ended one of the only funny parts of the movie. And that's it. Thanks Killing 3 came out in 2012, and there are so many other Thanksgiving horror movies out there, so stop saying I ran out. I just had to stop seeing these comments for my own sanity. Tomorrow's Bloodline to finish up Hellraiser for now. Until then, I'm James A. Janice. Go eat your turkey dinners. Thanks a lot for watching this piece of shit. I want to thank some patrons like Temporal, Michael Rupert, Dalton Bomer, and Charlotte Espley. And if you commented asking for Thanks Killing 3, did you even see the movie? Did you even fucking watch it? Did you even know what you were subjecting me to when you told me to do it? Did you think it was just like a regular fucking movie that I could have a fun time roasting? I had to fucking watch that thing. Then I had to rewatch it while writing the script. You think I just fucking type up a thing with it on in the background? No. I do my research, even with this Bullshit, man. By the way, Mad James, that's all an act, dude. I'm not actually pissed off at any of you, although I do hate this fucking movie. Fuck this movie. Be good people.